our God and our Father, we come before you and we spread ourselves open before you. You are the author of the Bible, as well as the author of life. We know it is not how much we profess we believe in Christ that matters, but how much of the Bible we truly believe and we truly live by. And so, Lord, we are praying and asking you that you will lead us individually Amen. so that when the time comes to test our attitude, our motive, our intentions, we will not be found wanting in Jesus' name. Yeah. Speak to us this morning again. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. We have come to the end of this workers retreat but hopefully we have not come to the end of reading the Bible neither have we, have we come to the end of praying neither have we come to the end of obeying the Lord many people are becoming used to the attitude of listening to God's word and not hearing what is said. Sometimes you have somebody at home. You call the person the first time. The person would hear but may not answer. Second time may not answer. Third time may not answer. Until you strike him maybe with your fist and, and say are you not the one I'm talking to then he will say well I'm sorry didn't you hear well I heard but I don't know why I don't normally answer the first time I'm talked to and many so called Christians are like that But it will be wonderful that we have the right attitude to the Word of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, by the way, I'm talking on the Christian in the world. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. That is saying that when you come out of Egypt, you go through the wilderness. You pass through Jordan. You step your feet on the land of promise. And you abide or live in that land of promise. There will be many other people you will see around the land of promise or within the land of promise not yet possessed. And you will be so close to them you will see them, you will know them. Their lives will be spread before your very eyes. Their influence will touch you or reach you. The opportunity will be there to commune together, talk together. And it says, when that day comes, do not ever think that your staying in the land of promise cuts you away from all reach of the Canaanites. They are there, you are there. You are no more in Egypt, but people so similar to Egyptians, 
in their hatred of the true God, in their practice of false religion, in their attitude towards the truth and towards what is right, they will be in the very land where you will be. And that is the time you ought to be very, very careful that you live the life that God wants you to live in Canaan. Many times we listen to believers and they say, when I was in the world, meaning and implying there are no more in the world. Many times Christians will be talking and they will say, when I was with the people of the world, meaning, suggesting there are no more with the people of the world. Many people will say, when I used to see all the worldly people, what they said or what they did, how they acted, suggesting that now they don't see, they don't know what the worldly people are doing. Neither do they hear what the worldly people are saying. All this is because of a wrong type of phraseology or vocabulary that has come into Christian preaching. Here we are at the IBTC from Wednesday night. And if I would ask any of you here whether we are touched, influenced, I mean right here, whether we are touched or influenced by the world, or we say no. All of us here, we are Canaan people. We all came out of Egypt. And we have walked a long distance from Egypt. We are saved. And I hear many people say, we are sanctified. I'm sorry for them. When I see a Christian just thoughtlessly, carelessly saying, I am saved, and then joins that and says, Thank God, I'm sanctified, I dress back a little to look at him. The thing because we have attended deeper life retreat and there is a one message, single message on sanctification and uh, the preacher said if you want to get it now raise up your hand, pray they raised up their hands, they prayed and they did sanctification back to that retreat sanctification and they go all about giving us testimony. But you know, tests prove testimonies. Before you very quickly, unknowingly, ignorantly, you know, just talk carelessly, I'm sanctified, I'm sanctified, I just like to remind you that God called Abraham and he came out of his place. And the Lord started sharing many things with him. He called him at the age of 20, uh, 75. Do you know? At the age of 99, 24 years after, God called Abraham and said, Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. Which means, was calling him to sanctification after 24 years. So don't just, uh, you know, very carelessly I'm sanctified. It's more than that. Read your Bible again. It's more than that. Have you ever heard of a man? You know, he was praying. And his face shone. And the glory of God was so much upon him that the people that saw him, the sinners that saw him, they said, the face shone like the face of an angel. An argument started. They argued, but he proclaimed. Because 
A sanctified vessel doesn't argue. He proclaims the truth. You may argue with him. You may disagree with him. But he doesn't argue. He proclaims the truth. And he proclaimed the truth. Well, as he was proclaiming the truth, they got so angry at proclaiming that truth. And he took up stones. And they were stoning him. I mean, real big stones. Some knocked him in the head. Some smashed his ears to the head. Some knocked his bone at the elbow out. Some crushed his knees. Some just got to his chest. And the blood was coming out. And he looked up to heaven, looked up at his enemies while they were stoning him and said, Dear Lord, count this not this sin, count it not against their charge. Take me home. That's sanctification. They abuse you, ordinary abuse, you can't take it. You come here to tell us you are sanctified. A little correction, you can't take it. You come to tell us that you are sanctified. Persecution, you can't stand. Throwing stones at you has not happened. Driving you out of the house, locking you out of the door for you to be eaten, not by mosquito but by lion, has not happened. And you fume and jump, scream, Run away from God. Run away from the Bible. I was sanctified before. Uh, I was sanctified one month ago, but you know, somebody did something that made me lose it. Uh, you think that, that thing is easy to lose like that? Sanctification. Got it in uh, January. Lost it in February. And I got it at the workers' retreat. Yes, I got it. Which workers retreat? Where did you have the time to pray, to get sanctified? That you got sanctification at workers retreat? Is it not this workers retreat we are? Where we preach, you eat, you bath, you talk. This the place you got sanctified. It will be tested back at home. They will throw, not stones, ordinary words. Ordinary words, ordinary, that has no value. They throw it at you. And uh, you will understand what I'm saying. Your wife will just burn your clothes while, while ironing it. Just to test that thing you said you've got. The car will splash dirty water upon your clothes. Just to test that fake thing that deeper life people are carrying about. And the people of the world, they will push you. If they have not been pushing you, I'm praying they will push you and knock you, ridicule you, just make jest of you and really squeeze you. If they have not been doing that, you have not got any test to know whether what you've got is genuine or not. People will deliberately make you angry if they, are not, if they have not been doing that. May God allow them to do it. Amen. So that all the fake, all the mask that we're putting on, called sanctification, all the marks will be thrown away into the gutter. And then your face will be clearly seen. The anger, the hot temper, the lack of forgiving other people. Everything will be clearly seen. Then you'll be able to run back to Calvary saying, God, I thought I had something. The test has proved my testimony. What I am saying is that, please, do us a favor in this ministry. Don't groan about saying, I'm sanctified, I'm sanctified. Go back to your closet. Go and pray. If your flesh is speaking louder than the doctrine you know, that's not sanctification. If when it comes to the time to marry, 
your flesh is speaking, get married, get married, do whatever it is, whatever anybody will say, do it, damn the consequence. And these are the people who have been carrying sanctification placard about, sanctification signboard. Let's burn those signboards. And please, don't open your mouth talking to others, going to other churches, saying their church is bad, this one is worse. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. They don't know what they are doing. We know what we're doing. When they get angry, they don't know that anger is a sin. When we get angry, we know it's a sin. When a state representative disobeys the leader here at the headquarters, he knows what he's doing. When a pastor in another church disobeys the headquarters, they don't know what they are doing. They have not been taught. I have taught you the word of God. I've taught you on dressing. We've written it on tracks. I've taught you on television. We've spoken it almost in every place we have preached. We have talked about the difference between light and darkness. The difference and the wide gap between the Christian and the people of the world. If you do anything against it, you know what you are doing. Those people of the world, they know nothing. So don't point accusing fingers to churches outside that they are bad. They are in darkness, they don't know anything. Anything they do, that's the best they know. Their preachers don't preach the Bible. They come to tell stories. We don't tell stories here. And so... Let's say, uh, shut up if you have been saying that church is bad, that church is bad, just shut up. Which one is good? Point to it. The one that is good. Where all the people keep to this Bible, this word of God, where their hearts are tender, and when the word of God comes out, they tremble and shake. Where they are living like the New Testament church. That's the church I'm talking about. If this church is not like that, shut up about condemning other churches. Purify this one. Make this one what it ought to be. And it will not be what it ought to be if you are not what you ought to be. Now, God told these children of Israel... As you go to Canaan, the Canaanites are right there. And as we talk about the world, understand that you feel that the world is out there. My Bible says the world is out there and the world is in here. Wheat and tires in the church. The tires are the world in the church. They are here. Judas is carried out in the midst of the disciples, the world in the church. And Ananias and Sapphira, right there in the early church, the world in the church. Aaron, who has not forgotten how to make a molten calf, he had not forgotten it. And so when Moses went away, just for a little space of time. The people of the world, not from Egypt, not from the Hittites and the Jebusites, right there. The world, and they were in the majority. They were having miracles that come through the Red Sea. They were having miracles, they were eating manna. They were having miracles, the pillar of cloud was before them every day. They were having miracles, the pillar of fire was there all the time. Miracles were there because... The quails will just come, brought by the wind. And they were eating miraculous food every day. You talk about God shall supply a need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. They started it. But they were the world. And therefore, they came to Aaron and they said, Rise up, make us gods, which shall go before us that we see with our eyes. I understand that none of you has any physical idol 
that you have made, but it's not your state representative, the idol, the God. And when your God, I told you before, I'm saying it again because you've not got it. When your God is not around, are you not relaxed? Tell lies, jest, say things that you know. When God is coming and you see an actual of somebody who has seen his God, case quote, then you see him, then you look at that direction, you see your God also. You say, I'm sorry, if God is around, behave right. You don't have God, the God of heaven. You are not Christians. You are just hypocrites. When you hear the word of God, if it is a state representative that is preaching it, you sit up. You sit up when he shouts. I watch the reactions of people. You know, if I come here this morning and I said, let's open the Bible. And I read the Tommy 18 very quietly, pass my comments very quietly. You don't take the word of God serious because, you know, I said it quietly. But if I shout, if I'm firm, if I say, if you do this, we discipline you. Aha! God has taught. They sit up. Those are not people going to heaven. That only when you hear a shout, can you obey the word of God? When we read it quietly to you, you cannot obey. Until you see us discipline another person and you're asking questions. Ah, we didn't see Brad so and so. We didn't see Brad so and so. What happened? Ah, don't you know? He was di Why did they discipline him? Because uh, of uh, lace. Ah, is that so? Ah, I will not go into, I will not get into discipline. Then immediately you begin to obey. That's Christianity. Why did they discipline Brassons? Ah, because of his marriage. Did you not hear? He, what did he do? Ah. She, uh, she went, he went to tell that sister, you know what uh, this deeper life, you know what they teach? You know what they say, and if you are going to be in this deeper life, mm. that's why the discipline, though, if you want to go to next workers retreat, if they know, if you, if you don't go and tell that sister, if they ask you, you tell them we didn't talk. Oh, Abi, did we talk? Please turn the cassette over. Is it not that I just said uh, you should be praying? Uh, but if you tell them and they drive me away and I go to hell, I'm on your neck. Oh, ah, no, I will not talk. Is that not your Christianity? And <laughs> you people are making noise about sanctification. Please shut up. Oh. Don't talk about sanctification. Go on your knees and read this Bible. You preach the word of God. I come here. I preach the word of God. And then uh, you stay in your hostel there. That thing did bro preach. Well, who do you think I am? I'm speaking the word of God and then you go over there and you say, that thing that bro said, do you agree? Who are you that you don't agree? Or because I don't come here to tell you I'm a prophet of God. Who is a prophet of God? Declaring the words of God. I come here and I declare to you the word of God that without holiness no man shall see the Lord. And you ask another person, do you agree? And because you have studied the mathematics or chemistry in your, what they call university, who taught you? That uh, because you are, maybe you are an engineer or because you are mending road for Nigeria, because of that, I preach the word of God to you. And you're asking another person, do you agree with that one? <laughs> you don't agree with the word of God? Ah, I fear you. If I sit in the congregation and a state representative is preaching the word of God, I bow my heart. Because at that time, that is the prophet of God bringing the word to us as a nation that is different. A peculiar people. Royal priesthood. And I will take the word of God as if it's just a small thing. And I tell you, well, 
I, I don't agree with that one. Why are you here if you don't agree with the word of God? Why don't you sit at home? Are you the tire in the church? Or do you want to be the wheat? The world is right here. That's what I'm telling you. And when it says, When thou art come into the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn. If you see anybody, my, my sisters, if you are a real genuine sister, understand, if the rapture happens right now, I'm, I'm sure you don't think that because rapture happens on the day of workers retreat, that therefore everybody at workers retreat will go. No, sir. We will go. I know about myself. Because I'm checking up every day. Before I sleep, I check up. Anybody I didn't forgive? Anybody I have animosity against? Anything that has cropped up during the day? Because it can come in the night. Before you wake up in the morning. And you wake up in the morning, there is trouble. Just a few Saturdays ago, a brother here in Lagos was talking with his wife right in the room like this. And as he was talking to the wife in the room, then he went out. And there's only one gate in that place. If the wife comes out, he will see the wife. Just spending about five minutes right there at the gate. Then he came in to the room, said, uh, so and so, where are you? Did not find the wife. Looked under the bed, looked at the toilet, looked at the kitchen, asked everybody in the house, they didn't see her. She, he said, what happened? Because if he passed through that gate, if she passed through the gate, he will see her. And then ran to me. It, before that, he was crying. He thought rapture had happened. He saw me and said, this is what happened. There, maybe it's rapture. I said, it's not rapture. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm that confident, my brother, my sister. I told him it couldn't be rapture. Because you see me here, rapture has not happened. Can you say that? If somebody comes to you and, say, and says rapture has happened without knowing anything. And it was a mystery to him and to us because he didn't know the wife at that time. We didn't know what really happened. Not in the room, not in the toilet, not anywhere. And he began to cry at home. And he says, oh, no, leader. And came and I said, brother, it cannot be rapture. I'm here. Rapture has not taken place. You check up every night to know that there is no skeleton in your cupboard. That the world does not come in very slowly, secretly. The world does not come into your heart, into your life. And that all the examples you see, you are in the hostel, you see another so-called deeper, deeper life sister. is uh, you know, doing whatever she likes to do, gossiping and doing things that are not right according to the word of God. If you want to make heaven, just leave her alone. That's the world. And the Lord is saying, when you see the world like that, keep on to the word of God. And I say, brother, you see another one, you get to the houses and you know, they do whatever they like with women. Please, just stay clear from them. They may be deep alive. I mean, when the rapture happens, in every location of deeper life, some people will remain. I can tell you that. Not everybody is saved. Not everybody is born again. There are the workers who will be left behind. When the rapture takes place, I know it. In fact, I will not be surprised if the rapture takes place and I see state representative that is still reading Bible, finding someone to preach, and the church has gone. Because God is no respecter of persons. He sees sin in any form, any shape, anywhere. He stands clear and tells you, thus says the Lord. And at that time, when the deeper life people are all here, no, not all of them, when some of them are here, and the workers, and they're now going back to their outlines, Let's see what the Bible said on Revelation. Is there a second chance? And they'll be looking for the state representative that remains. 
and they'll be going to him. He will become the general superintendent. Everybody will be, they'll say, you are close to bro before he went away. Now be our leader. Still there a second chance? Can we all come from Kano, from Sokoto, and then just come to a particular place so that when the tribulation will catch us, you'll be encouraging us because our state representative is gone, but you are here, you can help us. Because, you know, God is God. And if you are a Christian, remember you are in the world here. You are in the world. If your clothes is not clean, your thoughts are not clean, your life is not clean, even though you say you have thrown away television, you are repairing television, all the time, even though you are not wearing the clothes that are bad, you are discussing it. That uh, this is uh, word of God. This one is too tall. You are not wearing it physically, but it's a discussion every time. You don't agree with the marriage. You don't agree with the holiness. You don't agree there should be no gossiping. You don't agree that we should live a holy life. But you are a worker. You are the world polluting this ministry. And there are some people that... They are never, you are not, never able to pin them down. They are here, they are there, they are over there. And they are going all about. They are deeper. But they are not under the control of anybody. You can't control them, you can't talk to them, you can't rebuke them. And we have learned the abominations of the people of the world. How does a deeper life person know how to commit abortion? If you ask me now, I don't know. I mean sincerely. Even to do it, even if I wanted to do it, I don't know. If you ask me now, which chemist does a person get to to buy this pill or that pill? Sincerely, I don't even know. I'm just in Lagos here. I know Bagada, I know IBTC. I know where we used to go and record radio message. Which place do I know again? You know University of Lagos. To even know the chemist, where to buy the pills, to know the name, I don't know. And there you are here. You know the, the pills to use when you are pregnant and state representative must not know. You attempt abortion. And you say you are not in the world. All these sisters as I see, them, I don't know their names. The wife of a state representative was greeting me yesterday. And uh, I said, who are you? He said, ah, don't you know me? I said, I don't know you now. He said, I'm wife of a brother. So I said, is that so? That I didn't know. And I slept in their house when I went to their state. Who do I know? I don't watch people's faces. It's when you know somebody, you can even commit fornication with a person. And all you men, you know their houses, you know their names, you know their age, you know their salary, you know when they're having their monthly period. And you say you are Christians in this same ministry. And you say you are not having abominations. And you come here to deceive us. You have come for workers' retreat. And poor people, they register you down as a worker. Here the word of God says, when you come into that land, you come into this ministry, don't learn after the abominations of all these other people who are incorrigible. They have heard over and over and over. It's impossible for them to change. You know, I got married. Some of you heard at that time. If you were not here, ask the people who are here. This is the way I dress. In that marriage. My sandal, that's what I wore. If it's good enough to preach, it's good enough for wedding. If when I carry the Bible, the word of the living God, the word of the God of the universe, if I can dress like this, wedding is not as much as preaching. If it's good for preaching, it's good for wedding. Now, you have done wedding. 
you have grown wings. Deeper life. The reception. You wonder where they get the money. In a stage where they don't have money to pay workers. Money not, no money in the offering box. Somebody wants to do wedding. And you see the amount of money that is spent. You say, eh? So these people have the money. And the state representatives are dying, not able to pay house rent. And now we want to do wedding. We feed everybody. When your state representative is going in, look at your state representative. They are collarbones. They are out. You kill them with hunger. And then you want to do wedding. And you feed everybody. You feed the strangers. Your own leader, your own prophet and pastor and preacher, you can't feed. You say you are Christians. You say you are not worldly. Ah, deeper, deeper. Saved, sanctified, baptized in the Holy Ghost on my way to heaven. Ah, heaven. It's heaven that is easy to go like that. With covetousness, with copying the world. I've got a child. Ask the people in Lagos. They know the name of the child. They don't know the day when the child was named. The day that child was born, I sat with my wife. This is the name. Finished. No cover or naming ceremony. And you people, I have the access, please, to money. Because nobody looks at my hand to see what money comes in. A deeper like Bagada, Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. This building that we're doing, already we have spent more than 150,000 naira between September and October, two months. And yet, when the new denominations of money came out in April, before I knew the difference between 10 naira and 20 naira and 1 naira, it took me three months. I never touched it. The people count the money, they take it to the bank. I issue the check, they bring it back, and they give to the people who are to spend at the press state ministry or anywhere. I don't touch it. I have the access to the money. If I were to leave big, change the car, buy this one, buy this one. Recently, Taylor came here. And uh, he said, uh, I came to ask this question. They said that uh, you are traveling uh, at this particular time and you will need this suit. And that I want to know whether it's tomorrow or... I said, who said that? Somebody, they had been watching me. They saw that they trusted that the thing is uh, fading out. And I just go to fellowship my, on my own. I just wear my shirt. Just do whatever I like. And they became concerned. And they ran to the tailor. They said, make dress for this man. And now because he got into difficulty when I was to travel or when I was not to travel, then he came to us and I said, uh, who said so? Then the other people, they started laughing because they didn't want me to know. All the money is there. Why can't I take it and go and make dress for myself? And you don't have any money. You are receiving ordinary 300 naira per month. You want to do naming ceremony, you spend all the money you have on earth. And we people who have the access to the money, we are holding our hands like this, so that Naira will not tie me here when Jesus comes. I have the liberty to call any sister, say, come to my house, come and do this. You ask them in Lagos, they're, they're almost, uh, they're going to 20,000. Ask them who knows my house. They want to see me, meet me at the center. My house is not a restaurant or hotel for ladies to be coming and coming and coming. I don't want them to send me to hell. I remember something. That's what we're saying. That when you are in a place like this where the word of God is preached in its truth and entirety and you see the good example of those who are living by that word, stand by that word. Stand by that word. And it says here, when thou art come into the land, are you not in the land already? Which other church do you want? What, what else will any other church teach you? You are in the land of promise already. The salvation is there preached. Sanctification is preached. The power of the Holy Ghost is preached. Healing is preached. Deliverance is preached. The rapture is preached. The tribulation after rapture is preached. Millennial reign is preached. 
New heavens and new earth preached. New Jerusalem preached. Going to heaven preached. You are, in, you are in the land of Canaan. All the provisions are there. It's now in your hand. You can come with all the ideas of Egypt, all the ideas of denomination, and come into this place and do whatever you like. One thing is sure. If you don't make it, I'll make it. Heaven, whatever it will cost. If it costs me walking on my feet, it's only, how many years? I'm already more than 43. How many years remain out of 70? Less than 30, if Jesus tarries. If it takes me to drink Gary from now till Jesus comes, I'll do it. Because eternity is longer than 70 years. If it takes me to close my eyes as I'm walking so as not to see a lady, I will do it. I will sacrifice anything to get to heaven. If it takes me not to touch money or even clothes, if it takes me just to stand, no friend, no neighbor, nobody, because all friends have gone into the world, I will stand alone if I have to make that heaven. Alone. If it takes me just for people to say, brother, this is too much, I want to go and have a ministry apart. If it takes me just to have a few people, I'm not looking for The crowd is there, but I'm not looking at the crowd. I'm looking at Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of my faith. So that that day, when he comes, those of you make it, you'll see me and you'll say, thank God this brother, he made it. Because that's my determination. In the night, in the morning, in the day, that when that rapture happens, I'm going to make it. And I know God because he knows that every way, I'm looking at it, every way, that not a little hindrance of the drop of water will hinder me from making that place. I don't know your decision. You can rise up and tell the Lord, if you want to make it, you have to screw up. And you have to really tell the Lord, the world is not going to affect you. I believe you have been blessed. Don't let this message die. Listen to it again and pass it to others. You can get more from God at the Deeper Life Bible Church. Our headquarters is Deeper Life Bible Church, Bagada, Lagos, Nigeria. Blessed are your ears for hearing these things. We'll meet in heaven if you do them. <laughs>